Welcome down to the Malted Man Cave. I'm your host, Keith. <laughs> and I am uh, Dave, the Scotch Usurper. <laughs> <laughs> You're a hot mess. Um, thank you guys for joining us. Hope everybody is doing good. Tonight we're going to be doing a live review of Joseph A. Magnus Triple Cask. Um, Dave, I know, did, did you get into this a little bit? So I sent him samples a while ago. Because he had a buddy come, a, a mutual friend of ours that came to visit, and they were gonna have some guy time, and so he raided my the man cave for some whiskey. Did did you get into it at all? Uh, he came over and <laughs> I feel like five times. I was like, "Hey, man, bourbon and black ops, man. I'm gonna take the TV out to the garage, do a little COVID gaming," and uh, he uh, he he. He was wisely driving and decided that he wouldn't partake of it. But he was like, you got a to-go cup for me? <laughs> <laughs> so he wouldn't even have one drink? I mean, no. I get I wanted to drink more than I mean, two. It, but how, how many hours? Sorry, there is a tornado. <laughs> <laughs> Does he ever watch the channel? Does no. He subscribe? I don't know. Maybe. Hi, Ryan. <laughs> Anyways, so... Let's check and see who's in the chat. So Richie's in the house. Richie Z, what's up, buddy? Donner Pass Whiskey, who actually uh, we just exchanged some samples recently, and he sent some goodies. And one of them, which we were just texting offline about, is a really good Knob Creek um, nine-year-old single barrel, 120 proof. But it's a store pick. Typically, the store picks are even better. So I think I gave you some of that. That whole book, which was like it was actually like 14 or 15 years old, single barrel. Um, so I will be sharing this with you soon, buddy, or I'll keep it all for myself. Yeah, right. I'll I'll get my little grubby hands on a little bit of it. I'm sure you will. All right, whiskey rookies in the house. What's up, buddy? Thanks for joining us. Um, I think he's the he's the fellow Ohioan, right? From up from Cleveland, I think he said last time. Um, Mark Saliba, one of our one of our usuals. Thanks for joining, Mark. George Kaplan, one of our greatest benefactors, is in the house. What's up, my friend? Is Amy with us tonight, or is she in bed already? Um, Mead Mule, my cuz, is in the house. What's up, cuz? Stephen A is in. Jason Coates and Welsh Toro. Wow, it's like two o'clock in the morning over there in uh, in Wales. What's up, buddy? Thanks for joining us. I like it. I like and, the and for a bourbon, or at least American whiskey at that. Welsh, leave in the chat, I'm not sure. Do you like bourbons that much, Welsh? I know he like probably has some appreciation for it, but I thought he was mostly a Scotch guy. But I digress. So without further ado, Dave, do you know anything about Joseph A. Magnus? It was good. <laughs> so I believe. This is the whiskey is actually sourced from MGP, which is a distillery in Indiana. Um, they don't really produce a whole lot of their own stuff. They're tip, you know, they typically source out all their stuff to other um, distilleries and other companies, branding companies. So it's from MGP, and normally MGP juice is freaking delicious. Most people that know bourbon know that a lot of stuff in MGP is delish. Um, one of our favorite whiskeys that we had, remember a, Men, a Midwinter's Night's Dram. Oh, good. I was just talking that? about that bottom. Yeah, it just it was just everything was perfection about that. So that was MGP, um, you know, whiskey as well. So they do things right over there. So this is whiskey from MGP. I believe it's rumored to be about nine years old. That's most of the interwebs. Most of the information that's what I'm saying is about nine years old. And it is matured in um, cognac casks. Oloroso Sherry cask and Pedro Jimenez casks. So, we're, I don't know if you're gonna like this, Dave. It's bourbon, which you love, but it's got it's got some sherry. I know. Bro. It it it, it, it uh, we'll talk about it. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, George said that Amy's already called it a night. Well, good night, Amy. Hope you sleep well. Welsh says I'm into bourbon and have been for thirty years. I did not know that. I learned something new every day. I like it. No, you even better now, Welshy. Um, he says, I have managed to source an almost impossible find bottle of this cost. Man, this is 110 euros. 
It's like 130 bucks over there. So this is, I don't know if you know, Dave, it's not like anywhere near like Weller 12 or Patty. Yeah, 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 it's not yeah, like yeah, yeah. Oh, I look. This is a pretty, this is a pretty high, highly sought after bottle. A lot of people yeah, like this. It looked, uh, it looked like the, it was a little pricey. Yeah, and it, I'm not gonna lie, it looks pretty cool. I don't I know, know that too much hung up on like how cool the bottle looks, but sometimes it's just. But man, I am a sucker for. So I'm, I'm not a sucker for like extra, like chintzy stuff that's trying to make it like cheap stuff look nice. But like when it's a well crafted, just well designed, they took some time, some effort, some money into it. Um, it, it goes a long way. Yeah, I mean, I I, I appreciate intelligent um, marketing as long as it doesn't raise the the price of the the whiskey too much. If you know, that's one of the reasons why I like Springbank. Yeah, you know, sometimes I wish the bottles are like the. We're a little bit cooler, but I'd rather get better juice and pay a little less. But if you can have both, it's obviously a perfect world. So without further ado, Dave, should we pour a little whiskey? Oh, I already poured. <laughs> so if I seem stressed, Dave knows this. So we Yeah, tell us, tell us about it, man. Why are we running late? We had, Where a you mother, been, man? <laughs> we had a Mother's Day gathering at my mom's house, which um, you know, she already watches our kids, so we've already intermingled. So it's, you know, though COVID-19, it doesn't matter because she has to watch our kids because both me and my wife are essential workers. Um, so we were over there for Mother's Day and on the way back, we got a flat tire. <laughs> so literally I'm like waiting there and, and there was a couple other things that was wrong with it. So I'm like, dude, we got to get a tow truck because it was just going to be too much to try and just change the tire by myself. And a couple other things. So sitting there waiting, texting Dave, like, I think we can do it. Should we push it back to 920? Should we push it back to another night? And then last minute, so, I, was just, I was just about to post to Instagram a picture of the flat tire. And then, like, the, the truck pulled up. So I was like, dude, I think we can do this. <laughs> so, dude, like, so, so it's better than that. So, so of course, it's Mother's Day. Shout out to all the mothers out there. Shout um, out. We love you. Um my wife and I, so I had just like put the kids to bed and like uh, she was laying in bed already. And I laid, I was laying down next to her and uh, she already knew that I was going to take off to do this. And uh, you texted me saying, uh, maybe we could do it another night if he doesn't, if the tow truck doesn't show up, would Wednesday work? And I was like, hey, how? Uh, I told her what happened. And she's like, oh, so you might not be doing it tonight. And then, like, a minute, like, I could see on her face, like, oh, Dave's going to watch some some TV with me right now for a while. And then I, immediately you text back and you're like, I see the lights in the distance. And I was like, and Hallie was like, go do it. <laughs> she was happy. I think I think she's a, I, for anything, if you're a mother with small kids, you probably just want to be by yourself and alone on Mother's Day. <laughs> no, nobody's saying mommy, mommy, mommy. <laughs> so, so anyway, I'm glad we got to do this. Absolutely. So does anybody, I, just because I was so busy, I was going to look this up before, but obviously I didn't have time with the whole flat tire and car incident. Does anybody know what the mash bill is on, is on this in the chat? If you do, I'd greatly appreciate it if you could put it in the chat for everybody. I looked real quick, like two sites, and I couldn't find it, and then everything got crazy, so... Um, if you know in the chat, please let us know. I'm going to check in in some of the comments too, awesome before we get into this. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Peter White says it's non-existent in Canada. So apparently they have a hard time finding this in Canada. Um, Whiskey Rookie says Magnus is expensive, even at their standard bourbon. Yeah. I will say this. It's pretty good juice. So I, I'm willing to pay a little bit more for it. I don't know about Hundred and fifty dollars, which it sounds like they're selling some places. Um do, 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 do. <laughs> Donner Pass Whiskey says, considering the cost value of Springbank Core Range, they could write the name on some tape on a bottle and it'd be fine with me. I agree. <laughs> All right. George Kaplan says, You definitely need a dram. And yes, I do. So without further ado, let's get into some whiskey, buddy. What do you get on the nose? 
Now, this is us blind. I have not got notes for this, Dave. Have you gotten notes for this? No. And when I did drink it, it was like 1130 at night after Ryan left. I was like, I'm going to have a little bit of this and just see what it's like. So I don't I hardly don't even remember it anyways, either. Oh, man. Eric Waits in the house. What's up, bud? Hope you're doing okay out there in Cali. Anything uh, pop out at you, buddy? Yeah. So it's like a man. It's like an Andes mint with a lemon squeezed on it. There is a little bit of a herby, citrusy vibe to it. Yeah. Like, so a, like, a peppermint, like a peppermint plus, uh, or a minty, not peppermint, but that, uh, uh, what's, I don't know, fresh mint. There you go. Um, lemon is definitely there for me. It's like a vanilla lemon chocolate. I don't know, or maybe not chocolate. <clears throat> Something dark, about this dark, dark, yeah. Something about this reminds me of a midwinter's night's dram that we had. There was kind of this you get that sweet bourbony notes, but then there's like something sour in there, and then there's something drying, like linen, then like herbaceous. I'm linen. with you with that linen. That that linen is a great note. Then Definitely. there's a lot of, it's like sour peanuts. Then there's a peanut note. On the nose, on the schnoz. It's then almost like an almond butter or something like that, like a buttery nut. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of nuttiness in there. Um, then for me, the I don't know about cognac, but the the sherry cast start to kind of jump out at me. <laughs> Gosh, Siri is like hearing me talk and she's trying to respond. Let me turn my phone. How can I help? It's not what creepy at all. I'm watching. How can I help? I Send love the government. <laughs> so put I me, get so put me back in your pocket. Man. I get. I don't know what kind of chocolate. I think it's kind of more milk chocolate. Yeah, I'm with you on that. There is like a spicy. I think there. Now watch. There's not going to be any rye in there, but. It, it smells like there's rye. There's like a spicy spearmint wintergreen type note to it that makes me think there's some rye in here. What do you think? Yeah, man, I'm with you on that mint. I'm on that train. Donner passed whiskey. I actually sent a sample of this to him. So, Tim, what do you think? He says he poured this 15 minutes ago and the nose just keeps opening up. Are you getting any notes from this, buddy? What do you think? Do you think it's good, bad, okay? Let us know in the comments. George, I actually, I think I uh, poured a sample of this for you as well, my friend. Pretty sure I have uh, some samples in here, which if you want me to send them, I can. I know not everybody wants samples sent with the COVID-19 goodness all over them. It's, it's almost like, a, when, do you remember like a dream sickle? One of those like icicle uh, or uh, popsicles that you got from the from the uh, ice cream man rolling down the street. Yeah, there is a little bit of creamy, almost oranginess, probably from some of the sherry mixed with the corn syrup from the bourbon. That would make sense. Um, so Steve A says definitely getting some rye spice and DH so who knows a lot about bourbons, especially says yeah, it's gonna have some rye and most GP MGP is higher rye. Yeah. That's what I thought as well. Onto the palate, buddy, or do you? Yeah, that, that, yeah, that's what I thought as well. <laughs> yeah, Dave, you're yeah, the expert. Uh, Get on your game, bro. Remembered uh, my uh, my thesis was on uh, rye and mash bill. Uh, <laughs> so, Dave, do you? No, I'm not going to test you. I'm done. Sorry, I'm not going to do it. Um, what do you get on the palate, buddy? Wow. I will say this. This has got a ton of flavors. It does, man. A lot of flavors. Mm. Um, 
So the citrus is still very there. That mint or whatever that sharpness, that edge to it, it's almost like a peppery feel to it. Um, it's it, it it's almost like a uh, such a like a hot mint, a hot citrus mint is how I would put it. But yep. man, that's great. Vanilla all in there. Um, the sherry is more of a. It's like the good qualities of sherry. It's not. Um, it, I'm not experiencing leather or like, uh, <laughs> yeah, like, like get on the saddle, brother. I'm not experiencing that. Um, it's, and dark fruits are delicious. So it's like a raisin and a raisin impregnated a lemon. <laughs> what? And then, uh, and then their child met a uh, an orange. Interesting. And magic happened. And magic happened. <laughs> so George says he's had a couple of samples of this from Mark Brown, and he's been thinking about getting a bottle of this for some time, especially after Eric Waite's review. So apparently Eric Waite did a review of it recently. If you guys don't know, Eric has an awesome channel, um, awesome guy. He's retired. He's got lots of money, so he's got a lot of bottles and a really good collection. So go check him out if you don't already know about his channel. Um, I'll have to go check that review out as well because I have not seen that yet. But this is a good whiskey, man. I I would I, I picked this up for eighty five. I got lucky and I found it at Wineworks Day. Really? Yep, for eighty five. Which I you know, swear I, I swear I've seen that bottle there before. Uh, the whiskey friend is in the house. What's up, buddy? Yeah, he's from Scotland as well. Sometimes I, I doubt myself when I, I know he has a Scottish accent. I'm like, well, maybe he might actually live in the UK, even though he's got a Scottish accent. Um, what's up, buddy? Thanks for joining us. Pretty late over there, so honored that you joined in hey, for the wee hours. That is that is a, a glass half full or half empty. It is pretty early over there. <laughs> exactly. Uh, getting an early start on the day. <laughs> a bit, a big jump on the day. Apparently, uh, anything Daniel wrong? Whiskey Throttle says your head looks like a raisin. <laughs> looks like a raisin. Does me? It? No, mine. Me? He shows me his affection by by slights online in a public forum. Thanks, buddy. I love you too, Daniel. Um, so on the palate for me, let me take another sip. Man, it is a nutty, sherry, corn syrupy, drying rice. So you get the sweet corn syrup, vanilla, bourbon notes. You get that spicy wintergreen rye. There's a little bit of like dark chocolate, milk chocolate, peanuts galore. It's almost like a snicker bar. But there's a. That's a great way to put it. But then there's also like a little bit of sourness. There's something else. What else did I get in there? Maybe a little black licorice. Some fennel, maybe even. My, my go-to note. Fennel. <laughs> Some fennel. So much fennel. I'm telling you what, man. This has a lot going on. I'm actually going to add a little dab of water. Do you have any water? I do. I do. I just got some. <laughs> Alan Whiskey Friend says, hey, everybody. It's still whiskey time over here at 2.20 a.m. in the morning. Whiskey time <laughs> is time in, time in Scotland. Ooh, it, it gets even better with water. I, uh, so so what is that sour note that you were talking about? Um, I I just think that's more of like the dark fruit, um, the sourness of because uh, dark fruit can sometimes have kind of a bitterness, yeah, like a strawberry, has yeah, that acidic slash maybe even a little sweet sour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm actually getting more like the red fruits when I added water. It's kind of toned down the yeah the eye and the spiciness, and it's kind of bringing out more of the red fruits. 
Oh my, now I'm getting some caramel notes. Some caramel, like sour caramel. Doesn't sound like a good thing, but it actually it's good. Dude, like a like a sour apple dipped in caramel. Yes. Yeah, That's I'm exactly with you. Exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. The schnozberries taste like schnozberries. Eric Way says he gets schnozberries on Joseph Magnus. <laughs> what a good show. I oh, am over. I can't pull over any further. Augustus Lou, save some room for later. <laughs> hey. Anybody want a must? Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. A mustache ride. No, nope. no. Nope. Where are you going with that? I thought we were on Charlie and the Chocolate Factory references. No, man. Schnozberries. <laughs> I was on uh, Super Troopers. Mm. Hence me saying, hence Should have just me gone. licking the screen. Dude, Charlie and the Chocolate, that's where you went? What are you talking about? You said schnozberries. It's a good one. Yes, absolutely. I go to that, that chick that says, that's licking the, t the, the tape, the wallpaper. Yeah, yeah. it's the same reference. It's a, it's a, never mind. I know what Super Troopers is. That's just not where I first go. I know. It was just, it was just interesting where our minds go. Who wants, yeah. Good person, inappropriate. Good person. <laughs> I'm kidding. Anything else you get on the palate, buddy? No. Um, let's see. Someone said something I want to highlight. <laughs> I'm not gonna, uh, going with that red fruit thing. Um, more of the sweetness to it. Um, if anything, adding water makes it more like that red fruit sweetness. There's an earthiness to this that makes me think it was aged like in a good, like old fashioned Rick house. With lots of dirt and mm. wood. Maybe, maybe they went over to the Dunnage warehouses and. They don't have Dunnage. That's, that's and Scotland. they rolled around in it. It's only in Scotland. Only in Scotland. The no, I'm saying they went over. Now, I actually, I, I assume we could have Dunnage warehouses in the US. So technically, what? You need to have an earthen floor. Casts three high and a slate or thatch or some kind of roof. So I suppose we could. I don't know. That's a good question of the night. Anybody know? Do we have dunnage warehouses in the U.S.? I've only seen rick houses, which I don't know. Anybody know? Fun fact for the evening. All right. What about the finish, Dave? What do you get? Long, short. Um, I would say like a medium, a medium finish. Um, it has a, I, I would say the finish for me is maybe the, not my favorite part about it. Um, because it, I just feel for me, it kind of all blends together. Um, there's, there's, it's not as distinct as the first two pairings, but definitely, um, the the citrus and the vanilla and those the, the like the core stuff it's so good it's so strong it stays through it um yeah man it's great medium finish so for me it's for me it's medium to long man and i'm getting on the finish it is so much oak so it's like that spicy like so let me take that sip maybe that's what maybe that's what i feel is crowding out all those other things i'm looking for Hey, here we go. So it's medium to long. It's like that bourbon, vanilla, caramel, sour apple, which goes into like linen and oak. Then you get some of that chocolate cocoa. I think uh, Tim Donnerpass Whiskey was saying just chocolate cocoa on the finish, and I agree. And then it's got a little bit of licorice, maybe a little like herbaceous, like fennel. Yeah. It's back, Kennel. It it's a good whiskey. Jason Coach says that Four Roses Rick Houses are close to Dunnage style, but my guess would be they're probably they probably it's still a little bit higher than a Dunnage house would be my guess. Jason, do you know how how high they uh, stack their their cast? All right, let's check in with the comments real quick. 
Do you get, I wonder if you get a shorter or a longer finish depending on like if you're hungry, if you just ate, if you. Oh, yeah. It absolutely plays. People don't realize how much that does play a factor. What you've eaten, medicine that you've taken, just the mood that you're in. How Like, are you full? Are you not full? Like, I yeah. do not like drinking whiskey when I'm full. I mean, yeah. I like dr- drinking whiskey pretty much whenever, but I don't enjoy it quite as much when I'm full. I have a fair pork chop in my belly right now. That was the size of my head. And was it delicious? It was delicious. Dude, Shout I've out grilled me. so much. I've grilled steak out three times. I've had burgers and brats probably four times. I made ribs, which were freaking yeah. incredible. I got to have you over for my ribs, dude. You should, cool. man. Um, someone else was saying something. Else that I want their single story. I think four, maybe five. Jason Coach says for the four roses, Rick houses. So doesn't look like there are any Dunnage warehouses, even though Rick houses that are smaller are kind of pretty much the same. Um, all right, buddy. Malted Man Cave Mark, what are you gonna give this? Hey, so I I loved it. I thought I think it's great. I'm glad I have a little bit more of my sample left. Um it is I, maybe I hyped it up in my mind a little bit more because it was late the night before. Um, I'm going to give this a very strong 89. 89. Yep. I'm right around there. I think I'm going to, because it's a higher ABV and it is just stinking full of flavor, man. I think I'm going to give this, uh, I want to give it a 90. Oh, but should I? <laughs> Sorry. No, I think you already decided. It's an 89. <laughs> Alan says, Keith, is that even a word in the States? Dunnage? <laughs> it is for us whiskey geeks. I don't think anybody else, else knows what Dunnage is. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go with 89. I was thinking a 90, um, but I think that might be a little bit. It's just how much I'm enjoying it right now, but I think it's probably more accurately scored at an 89. Maybe a 90, man. This is really good stuff. You know what? It's good. It's good. I agree. I agree. I'll bump it up a point, too. 90 for both of us. It, it's it's a really good whiskey. Cheer, cheers to the best, man. Cheers, buddy. All right. So we got a couple of new people in. Zahn Borokov. Forgive me if I'm murdering that. I thought I saw someone else. Um, Anybody want to talk last dance tonight? <laughs> Nightcrawler's in the house as well. I still have, dude. I I still haven't got to watch it. I don't, ah, have, I don't have a channel. I don't have Hulu live, live TV. I need to get it. You got to get on those interwebs, man, man, and sail the sail the seven seas. Is there a way to watch it illegally? Not that I would ever do that, ever. All right, so ninety for both of us, Dave. Question of the night: something not too controversial. What should we talk about? Is Kim Jong Un dead? So what are they saying now that they have like a body double for him? I don't know. Did you hear that? That someone said it's like a body double. It's not really him anymore. It's not him. Um, It's a non-controversial day because this will lead me down all kinds of rabbit holes. All kinds of rabbit holes. All right. Uh, He says, "Nice beard, Dave." (laughs) Hey, hey, thanks, man. Thanks for joining. I learned it by watching you. <laughs> I guess they didn't have those commercials. Did they have uh, those generic uh, 90s uh, don't do drugs commercials in Canada? <laughs> Somebody uh, look it up. Hey, so uh, question of the night. Um, I was thinking about, um, I was watching this. You know, you get on a YouTube rabbit hole and you will take a journey that will change you. Uh not always for the best, <laughs> but anyways, I went on this rabbit hole thing. And I'm watching this guy talking about um, like draft order and how um, how certain drafts played out that enabled certain teams to get certain people. Um, if you could pick your favorite sports team that successfully build. Uh, from two people, you gl- you glitched out for a second. Can you repeat that? Can you hear me? So, yeah. so if you could pick your favorite sports uh, team, no matter what 
and everybody else pick it. And you can pick two people from history to build that um, that team around. Who would you pick? Ooh. That's, I mean, that's easy. MJ, okay. MJ and LeBron all day. MJ I, and LeBron. All right. I've all always right. said this. I've always said I take LeBron James for the first three quarters and MJ for the fourth quarter just because he's just more clutch and he's just got that it just – when they're down, just step on their yeah. throat. And his, his outside shot, obviously, is a little bit more clutch than LeBron. Although, statistics show that in the playoffs, LeBron has made more game winners and go-ahead shots. But I think I think that might be an anomaly of statistics. It may not be as reflective as what yeah. actually happened in real life. So so for basketball, I would, uh, I would put um, – I, I would take prime Shaq with prime AI. Whoa, 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 whoa. To build – maybe I didn't hear your question. Prime Shaq. All right. No, but, so but Prime said, Shaq. What two people would I build a franchise on? Right, at, And I could get them right out of the draft. Rookies. Is that what you said? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so rookies, rookies, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but rookies, so, so not prime. So rookie AI and rookie Shaq for me. Okay. I mean, that's a great team, but – I just didn't want to pick Jordan because <laughs> you took Jordan. I, mean, initially, I feel like you could take Jordan and then insert Shaq. Take Which Jordan would be a good fit, but LeBron because he can just do it. He can guard every position. He can play well, every position. So he's do you feel like, player, like Jordan, he, there wouldn't be as much of a fight because he would actually pass to MJ Jordan, and I'd be like oh, Jordan or LeBron or uh, Jordan Magic. Say that again. So, how much of a drop off is Jordan LeBron from Jordan Magic? Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm thinking. Okay. I love Magic, but I think LeBron is definitely better, quite a bit better, in my opinion. Than Magic. We have so much, so many comments going on right now that I feel like we need to address some of the comments. All right. So, Dustin, who just doesn't know anything about basketball, I'm just kidding. I'm just joking, Dustin. He says, Duncan and KG. My team will win a hundred titles. I guarantee oh you, LeBron and MJ or MJ and Shaq with e bag those two all day. And I love Duncan and I his love KG. Follow up. Hey, destroy them. His follow up was Shaq and AI would fight, and he just had KG and Duncan on the same team. Oh man, he doesn't know basketball. So MJ KG would be the best possible pair. Ah, I get what you're saying because KG kind of has that dog in him that MJ had, but they might end up fighting each other though too. That could backfire. I, I want to go up to a non basketball related question real quick um, from Mark Saliba. He wanted to know, hey Keith and David, do you guys smoke cigars, and which whiskeys do you like to pair them with? So. We both like cigars, but we don't smoke cigars a whole ton. I would like to if I had even more money to get cigars. And Lindsay doesn't really like me smoking too much, so I have to, like, do it whenever she's away. I mean, she doesn't care if I – as long as I don't smoke every day, she, you know, I'm a man. I'll do what I want. But she just doesn't want the house or the garage. Like, she has – she is a bloodhound, man. That one time about a year ago or two years ago, we had a poker night in the summer – in our garage and we brought chairs out. We had a table and people were smoking cigars. And it literally, we had the garage door open the whole time. She was at her mom's house or somewhere else. I left the garage door open the whole night to air out. And the next day she's like, what is that horrible smell in here? Dude, like, I'm like, are, I aired it out for a okay. whole night. <laughs> but back to the question. Um, I really don't like smoking cigars with whiskey unless it's peated. So I've had like, you know, had cigars with like Glendronic, like real sherry or bourbon matured ones. And then I've had bourbons. I really don't enjoy the pairing unless it's with a peated scotch. The, the smokiness and, you know, the, the robustness from the cigar. Or, or <laughs> after enough. Huh? Or after enough bourbon. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But for oh, me, yeah. oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> Cloves. <laughs> Cloves. Who wants a hookah? 
So, anyways, yeah, I only really like uh, cigars with peated whiskey, and I, I'm, I'm not as much as a connoisseur with that to, to say, oh, I like, you know, the Monte Cristo with Lagavulin 12. Although that sounds like an amazing pairing. So, um, let's go down to a little bit more basketball, Dave. Do you have anything more you want to say about that? Welsh Toro uh, says, "Oh gosh, basketball." All right, so let's uh, let's, greatest let's, talk, sport. let's talk cricket. Cricket. <laughs> uh, Kobe and Nowitzki. I, I like <laughs> that Jason coach. I mean, that'd be a great team. I, I love Kobe and Nowitzki is very underrated. His hey, like I, all the way shot was unstoppable. I like uh, I like Swami's pairing with Muggsy Bogues and uh, a fat Charles Barkley. <laughs> Does that mean Swami? That means you actually know a little bit about basketball if you know who Muggsy Bogues is. That's kind of surprising to me that you know who that is. You know what mine would be? You know who mine would be, Dave? Who? Manute Bowl and Spud Webb. <laughs> Just to see them next to each other. Uh, okay, so how about another sport? How about foot? How about football? Okay, American football. Yes, yeah, sorry. sorry guys. The, all the Europeans, other than Welsh and uh, Allen, David like, Beckham yeah. and <clears throat> Ronaldo. Say that again. Those are only soccer players I know. <laughs> I, Just who kidding. Was that, who I know was more. The French guy that like always like head butted people. Oh, Zidane. Zidane. <laughs> I kind of had a love hate relationship with that guy. I also liked when Germany had those like four like ginormous defensive backs like in the back. Ooh, like that is a good guys. pairing for football. Dustin Brady, uh, Brady and Moss, such a good pairing. If they would have been together at the right time, yeah, the primes and at the right, yeah, yeah, that one year, man, that was magic. That was so awesome. Michael, to watch. Michael I'm gonna. I'm going to murder your Italian name, bro. I'm so sorry. Michael Manganiello. Manganiello? How would you pronounce that, Dave? Where's it at? Manganiello. Michael Manganiello. I think that's right. He says Penny and Shaq, which they did. And what people don't remember is that I believe it was those two, those two who beat Jordan when he came back from retirement. And all yeah. the historians like to gloss over that, that, that year. They just like to just – Pretend like it didn't happen. Whenever the LeBron Jordan is it happened. is it Michael <laughs> Mangan Manganello Manganello? That's what my guess. Manganello Manganello Manganello. That's my guess. Um, man, do you remember those? Hey, do you remember how Manganiello. awesome the, the Little Penny commercials were? What? The Little Penny commercials. Yeah. yeah, I love those. Dude, remember, I, I eighth grade year, I had the pennies. Remember? I know, the dude, they were, they were awesome. like the coolest things ever. They were awesome. <laughs> Swami saying, my face is getting hey, right we got it. whiskey. That <laughs> It's so true, dude. I don't have a tan yet, and I'm so, I got sunburned a couple of days ago. <clears throat> Michael Whoa. Manganella says he had those shows, too. Those shoes were amazing. I remember when I first bought them because I didn't grow up with money. That was like the first expensive pair of shoes that I got. And I remember I'd like smell them like before I actually wore them for the first time. Actually, I'm lying. I, I smelled them after, after, I, after I wore them. All right. DH Self says the Malted Man Cave. Oh, snap. Where? Ah! Guess who's? All right. Guess who's who, guys? Who's the guy on the left? Anybody know in the chat? Who, name that guy on the left. And then after that, oh, it went out, Dave. Put it back up. Who's that guy on the right? <laughs> Look how tan. Dude, I was so tan. And Why is he so tan? Look at that jawline, man. I missed that jawline. Yeah, look at that jawline. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Funny story about Trojans, Dustin. So. That, I had no part of this. I was a bystander. I think I was in junior high, and, like, we were at some high school basketball game, and we were playing, the, like, another team, like the Spartans or something. <clears throat> and they were, like, talking smack. And one of the guys from our team who was the Trojans, he was, like, they were all talking trash. And the guy just looked at the guy from our school who in our mascot was the Trojans. He's like, Trojans are for dicks. 
and then just walked away. And the guy from our school just kind of put his head down. <laughs> and <shame>. Argument over. <laughs> Trash talk done. Right. Keith, is that a mullet? What are you talking? Put that picture back up. I don't have a mullet. And hey, uh, have a hair cut on now. When, when Keith and I were in high school, we would come in and we would play with some of the the teachers basketball. And uh, he he was guarding our eighth grade English teacher, and he <laughs> he like blocked he blocked the teacher's shot and called him a pud whacker. <laughs> <laughs> This is this is like this is like sixteen year old Keith getting so excited that he blocked a shot. It's like, <laughs> get out of my house, pub. <laughs> I had rage issues for a while. <laughs> like, 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 really? That's that's what you chose. But hey, man, that's what you do, and, dude? Shout out to Schwab for like taking it and being like, don't ever say that. <laughs> All right, so let's finish up this game, but. And then we're going to wrap up. All right, so we're going to morph it into football, right? So who, yeah, yeah, yeah. who football, players football. that you would take to build a franchise around? Straight yeah. out of the draft, as rookies, who would you yeah. take? This is the last question, guys. Put yeah. it you, in the comments if you want to tell you, us who you would pick. You got, them for, you got them for 10 years. <laughs> 10 years. 10 years. All right, so I'm going to think. All right. Got one. So many slides are being thrown my way in the comment section right now. Dude, I um I would like to I would see um uh Jerry Rice and Peyton Manning. Yep. That's a good pairing. Um so for me. Actually, before I say mine, so DH Self says Peyton Manning and Jerry Rice. Oh, D what? Uh, Swami says Rudy and Air Bud. <laughs> Richie says Montana and Rice. Sweetness and Neon. Dion, the ne Neon Dion. <clears throat> uh, Rogers and Nelson actually won a Super Bowl. That's a good pick. So you know where I got to go? Oh, I got to think about this before I yeah. lock in. <clears throat> My initial response was Brady and Barry Sanders. Ooh. Because I think Barry Sanders is the most talented running back. He didn't get to accomplish as much because his teams were terrible. Okay. He's the most elusive running back in the so history of the NFL, in my opinion. So I'll, yeah, I like that. Do you think you could? How good could you be if you had Reggie White and uh, what's his name? Why did I just forget his name? Um, T uh, T L no T T I. Who's the big linebacker? For uh, Baltimore? Lawrence Taylor. L Lawrence Taylor. Lawrence Taylor. What if you had Lawrence Taylor and, like, Reggie White or, like, just, <clears throat> like, a mass defense? Do you think you could go win a Super Bowl like uh, like Peyton did with uh, with his Broncos defense? Do you think you could do that for 10 years? So one of the reasons I hesitated because I was also thinking about picking a defensive end because I think a really good middle linebacker or a really good defensive end – <clears throat> can impact the game just as much, if not more. Who do you think is the best defensive end or defensive tackle? Oh, man. Lawrence Taylor? No, uh, who do I like uh, in spirit? Uh, Ray Lewis? Man. Dude, Ray Lewis is always fun to watch. Um, I don't know. Probably uh, for our age – Growing up, Lawrence Taylor was just like the talk. So for me, like everybody was like, I didn't get to watch him. I didn't get to watch him play enough. To we didn't that. either, but pretty much everybody was compared to him. He was like, or watch him. Um, I don't know, man. <clears throat> man. The uh, the brothers out of Ohio State look like they're going to be pretty good. <laughs> 
Yeah. Nick and yeah, Bosa's the Bosa's, Bosa's man. Is incredible. They look tough. Imagine if they get on the same uh, team. Could you imagine if we had Nick Bosa and Chase Young that whole year, just wrecking, wrecking? Something always happens every year for us, man. Someone gets hurt. Someone gets in trouble. We get screwed by the refs. Uh, Michael Manganello says Mahomes and Moss, which off the cusp, we're like, ah, oh, Mahomes is too early. But the trajectory Mahomes is on, him, his athleticism and elusiveness and then just tossing it up to Moss, literally did, he has to just toss it up. Did, do you remember Santana Moss? Oh, yeah. Dude, he was so good. Santana so- Holmes from Ohio State, too. Once caught that Super Bowl touch, uh, so that touchdown winning Super Bowl. Touchdown winning Super Bowl. Super Bowl winning touchdown. <laughs> wow. It's been a long night. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us and uh, listening to us uh, blabber on for a while about sports. Hope yeah, you guys are all well. Hope your families are doing well. Um, please like, subscribe, turn on the notifications, and remember, as good as this bourbon is, Scotch is king. But bourbon is best. See you, Scotch usurper. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. Take care. Good night.